Hi, this is Tecla Petridou, and this is our weekly video in English. Today it's Friday, the 12th of June, 2020, and today's subject is an answer to the question, how do I get to know or realize whether a new acquaintance of mine is a match, is a good match for me? This question was sent by a viewer of my YouTube channel in Greek. But I thought of it like um, an interesting subject also for a video in English. Um, let's suppose that we are single and, uh, me and we mingle and somebody flirts us, either a man or a woman. It depends on our gender or sexual orientation, etc. Um, the lady who posed the question is single, she's straight, and uh, she met uh, somebody uh, on her workplace, through her workplace. It's not, a, it's not somebody who works with her, but it's rather a customer at the services that the company she works for provides. And um, he asked her out, and they went out on a couple of dates, and then she was wondering whether that new acquaintance who is obviously flirting with her. Um, the way she described it to me, he was uh, overtly fl flirtatious, but not in a pressurizing manner. I mean, he showed his interest, his love interest in her, but he wasn't pressurizing her for anything. I mean, he was like, let's go out, let's meet, let's have a drink, let's have dinner. Would you like to go? Um, to watch a movie or something, or to catch a play. Not nowadays, before coronavirus pandemic. Anyway, and she was wondering whether that new person uh, that entered her life and shows um, interest for her romantically, whether he's a good match for her. In these occasions, I like to reverse the question. Uh, do you like him? It's not exactly reverse reversion of the. I do not exactly reverse the question, but I shift the focus from whether that person is a good match for me, on do I really like that person? To what do I really like that person? Because if somebody is flirting with us, and he might be a good match for us, but we do not like them, we do not feel any any kind of attraction towards that new person. It's irrelevant whether it's a good match for us or not. Am I, get, am I getting myself clear? I know it's a difficult uh, time in the 2020s. I know how, the, how societal rules work. I know that lots of single women, lots of single men uh, nag about not being able to find somebody who is really interested in them and willing to invest in forming a romantic relationship with them. Nevertheless, we shouldn't compromise for anything less than somebody who attracts us. This is the first base. Does this person attract me? Do I feel attracted towards this person? Do I find this person um, a love being for me? I mean, do I see this person? Do I meet this person and I feel uh, romantic attraction or even physical attraction? Attraction? is necessary in order to start asking yourself whether somebody is a good match for you or not. I posed that question to her and she said, yeah, I think so. No, you don't think so. Either you like somebody or not. Either you, either you are attracted to somebody or not. Because on many occasions, uh, people choose to form relationships with somebody that is a good match for them or looks like a good match for them but they, they do not feel so, so they, they are not so hot towards them. They don't see them as hot people. They see them as somebody, oh, he's a good case. It's a good case. It's a good um, match because we have the same age, um, more or less. We have similar educational level. We have similar, similar financial background or family background. Uh, we live in the same uh, country, or we live in, live in the same city, or we talk the same language, or we like uh, similar stuff. So, okay, he's a good match, he, she's a good match. But I take out of the equation the, 
the attraction factor. You shouldn't. There is no reason at all to form a romantic relationship where attraction is not present. Let's clear this out. Let's move on. I'm not talking about the lady who posed the question because I made a video in Greek uh, responding to her several months ago. Let's talk more uh, generally. Let's say that we meet somebody who shows that she or he is interested in us romantically, who shows that uh, are willing to proceed, hmm, to get to know us better, to maybe form a romantic relationship with us, and we feel attraction to that person. How do we get to realize whether this new person who is in our lives uh, in our life is somebody that we might be a good match with. How? First of all, trust your gut instinct. What does your gut instinct tell you? What, that, what did your gut instinct signal to you as soon as you saw that person? Oh, what was the first, the initial reaction? I like this person. I feel familiar with this person, I feel familiarity, closeness, or I dislike this person, there is something dark about him, about her. I feel fear of this person, or this person is way out of my league, or this person means trouble. Gut, your first instinct. We should uh, trust your gut instinct. We should trust our initial reaction this um, primitive reaction that our gut instinct has, which is unfiltered. It's not filtered by most of societies or stereotypical ways of uh, living or thinking. It's raw, it's primitive, it's pure. What was your first thought you had when you first laid eyes on that person or when you first read their message or you first uh, um, uh, emailed with them? or talk to them on the phone, what was the initial reaction? Trust that initial reaction. Because in the meantime, when you start dating and getting closer and closer to one another, there is this body chemistry and this brain chemistry that can interact in uh, magnificent, but also malevolent ways and makes disruption in our brain. We cannot see clearly. Who is a good match for you? A good match for you is somebody who likes you the way you are. Is somebody who admires you the way you are. Is somebody who wants to be with you, who wishes to be with you, uh, without asking for any changes on your behalf. Somebody who don't want to become your child or your protege or uh, a codependent person on you. Somebody who is their own person they can live by themselves, they can support themselves financially, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally. They can live a fine life without you, but they want to make their lives finer by adding you to the equation. Somebody who has a desire for you, not a need. What's the difference between need and desire? When you need somebody, it seems that you are lacking of something. You are lacking of stability in your life. You are lacking of financial stability. You are lacking of mental stability. You are lacking of emotional stability. You are lacking of um, any kind of riches, uh, materialistic or so emotional or spiritual. And you need to be with that person in order to feel fulfilled. This is what need is. And need, need is a very bad advisor for the beginning of a new relationship. Either you feel needy towards the other person, or the other person feels needy towards you, or need is one of their, be, uh, one of their first and uh, basic motives in order to approach you, this is a recipe for disaster. On the other hand, desire is so free. Desire is like a cat, and need is like a dog. <laughs> if we are gonna talk, if we are gonna talk like uh, pet people. To dog owners, they usually say that my dog is very loyal to me, my dog is always after me, my dog waits for me to feed him or feed her, to, to, to give me water, to take me out, to take care of me. And I take care of my boss, 
I lick his feet, I wag my tail, I, I, I show my affection to my boss because my boss serves me right. Whereas a dog, a, do a cat, is a free spirit. A cat don't need you. They don't come after you. A cat, when she likes and when she feels like it, she can come to your yard he, if, if it's a free cat. I mean, if it's not a, a pet you keep in the house. She can come at any time and pass by and show some attention to you or not. She chooses deliberately in order to communicate with you or not communicate with you. And the cat can live by herself and doesn't need you, but they choose to, to come to you because they like your food or they like the energy you give to them or they just or they are just being <laughs> masochistic and they like your hideous personality, just joking. So desire is like a cat, it's free. I have a desire to be with you. I have a, a desire, I have a love desire, I have a, an erotic desire to mingle with you, to, to have some kind of relationship with you. And because people usually have many kinds of relationship with each other and love relationships, they have many ways of going on. I mean, some people can live together, some people can have a long, uh, long distance relationship. Some people can have a long term relationship. Other people a short term relationship. So, some people get married. Some people they never get married, but they are more in love with each other than the married ones, etc. I mean, there is not one recipe for a love relationship, but there are some basic ingredients, and one of it is desire. So, number one is attraction, and number two is desire. I really do desire to be with you. I feel that you make my life better, not that I need you in order to function or in order to survive, but I like my quality of life to become better. Being with you makes my quality of life better. So is there any desire from your side? And is there any desire from their side? Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise you to move into a relationship with somebody who needs you. Desire is much more preferable than need. Um, so we talked about attraction, we talked about desire and mindset. Does this person that I flirt with and I met and shows attraction and desire to me, and they also show attraction and desire to him or her, does this person have a similar mindset like mine? Do they think in a similar manner? Not the same. You cannot, uh, you cannot find any two human beings on this planet thinking the same and having the exact identical mindset one with each other. But you can have similar mindsets. I mean, it's basic. It's important on how you see love relationships, on how you see society, on how, what do you think about ways of living? What do you think about uh, um, humanistic ideas? Um, what you are political ideas, not 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 who you vote for, but what are your ideas on people and your perspe perspective on people's freedom? For example, now it's there is a lot of discussion about this uh, Black Lives Matter uh, movement. If you are pro life, pro Black Lives Matter, and you meet somebody who is racist and is against this movement there is a clash of mindsets. And this clash of mindsets might not be, might not cause so much trouble at the beginning, and in the, in, in, later on, you're gonna find it in front of you. So it's, it's important to share common values and, and have similar mindsets. And also our habits. What is uh, the program of this person? How do they like to spend their lives? For example, uh, you might be an extrovert. And you meant somebody who's an introvert. Extrovert, extroverts and introverts do, are not a good match. An extrovert becomes a good match with somebody who's equally extrovert and an introvert with somebody who is equally introvert. You can never find somebody who's exact, has the exact percentage of introvert, of being introvert as the other. But all of us will have some introversy and extroversy in our uh, personality and character, but it should be on, on, on a similar manner. For example, if somebody is an introvert like me, 
although I show to be an extrovert person, I'm more like an introvert person. They don't like to mix with large crowds. We don't like to mix with large crowds. We like to stay more at home. We like to do stuff by ourselves, read, write, um, uh, um, do our gardening or do our physical exercise or create stuff and spend time with ourselves in an introvert uh, fashion which relaxes us. Uh, if we try too much with somebody who is an extrovert and they want to get out all the time and they want to mingle with people all the time and they like loud noise and they like loud music and they like all these things that us introverts uh, feel like noise and um, something they don't like, then you have a clash as well. So personality traits should be similar. Not that you cannot find that the identical personality traits, but sh uh, similar and also uh, habit, habits of living. I mean, if you like to shower twice or three times a day and you get to mingle with somebody who showers once a week, <laughs> there's a clash there. <laughs> and maybe some, some uh, uh, smelly problems. I don't know. And um, God is uh, very important and I, I forgot to mention at the beginning is are you both single? Are you both on a similar phase in your life? Do you want the same things from life? I mean, you might want a short-term relationship. He or she might want a long-term relationship. These things are important in order to have a good match. There is attraction, there is desire, there is um, uh, similar traits and similar ways of thinking and sim similar ways of thinking and similar ways of living and also uh, mutual um, um, desires about life, uh, similar plans about life. I mean, if you meet somebody and he's about to move across the globe and go on a mission and you want to stay home, stay put, then you have a clash there. You don't have the same um, life, uh, life prog uh, programs or life uh, dreams. I believe that everybody, anybody, everybody is allowed to uh, program their lives, is allowed to have um, and dreams about the future, and they are also allowed to um, uh, make relationships or form relationships with people that their uh, plans do not clash, their characteristics do not clash, um, and more or less, a good partner for you is somebody who looks a lot like you, but he's, uh, he or she is somebody else that you have attraction and desire for. I hope this was uh, um, interesting or um, uh, helpful to somebody who is wondering about some, some, new, some new person they met in their lives. And I close this video by um, reminding you that it's a good idea to take it slow if you want uh, a, a relationship that will last or it will be more um, emotionally gratifying, you, you will have more emotional gratification from it. Take it slow, take your time, don't rush into things. Uh, try to, to, to see for yourself first if you like the other person and, and if you really desire to be with. Don't get impressed by somebody who chose to be in love with you or who does extreme things or a lot of things, a lot of effort in order to be with you. Remember always that freedom is important in forming a relationship, in staying in a relationship and living from a relationship. I do hope the best to all of you that uh, you are on the dating arena at these difficult times. Have a nice weekend, everybody. If you liked my video, please press like, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed on my YouTube channel, please subscribe and push the bell for notifications. And usually every Friday at noon, one video in English is uploaded, is uploaded on my YouTube channel. This is Tecla Betredo. Bye.